team has been a work in progress that seems to have reached its peak at precisely the right time. A second straight trip to the Final Four and a better showing when they get there has been their year-long rallying cry. For them, these are waters they have not tested in 63 years, and Atlanta looms on the horizon. And the regular season's Blue Ribbon team looks to turn their tributes into a trophy. Four teams are all looking ahead, but by day's end, only two will remain on the road to the Final Four. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is presented by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Hi everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to CBS Sports continuing coverage of the 2002 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Tournament. Oklahoma from the West Bracket and Indiana from the South qualified for the Final Four yesterday. They will meet in one of next Saturday's national semifinals. Today we'll find out who will represent the Midwest and the East. Coming up in the next half hour here on the road to the Final Four, we'll meet the father of Maryland, Steve Blake. He never misses a game, no matter how long it takes him to get there. And we'll learn how Steve gets his drive from Dad. Basketball is also a family affair for another outstanding guard, Kirk Heinrich of Kansas. We'll visit with him and his proud parents. And then it's game time. The high-scoring Oregon Ducks have not made it this far in NCAA tournament play since 1960. They'll meet the top seed in the Midwest, Kansas. The Jayhawks look to return to the Final Four for the first time since 1993. Then, in the East Regional Final, UConn seeks its second ever Final Four appearance. Back in 1999, the Huskies won it all. And Maryland is looking for a chance to redeem itself after falling to Duke in one of last year's national semifinals. My partner along the road to the Final Four is the one and only Clark Kellogg, and we have two number one seeds in action today. Is it a cakewalk for a number one seed? I don't think it's a cakewalk, but I think both number ones will prevail. The higher seeds won yesterday, and I think in competitive and entertaining games that you'll see Maryland and Kansas advance to the Final Four. All right, Clark, uh, with more on today's Midwest matchup between Oregon and Kansas, let's take you to Madison, Wisconsin. Our colleagues Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery. All right, Greg, thank you. A gorgeous Sunday in this beautiful city in South Central Wisconsin and not too far from the state capital, the Kohl Center. We are inside anticipating this matchup between the Ducks of Oregon and the Jayhawks of Kansas. Bill, these two teams really do look a lot alike. Uh, both coaches preach unselfishness, and what they do is give it to one another, like to run the floor. They shorten the floor as well. But what's amazing to me is you look at the field goal percentage from three. That's because they run down. If they don't get something inside, They'll kick it back. They've got great perimeter scores. And look at those average points per game with Kansas above 90 and Oregon above 85. We all think this is going to be an up-tempo game. I would expect it would. They like to run the fast break up and down the court. We like to fast break. Uh, I like to watch games like that. So that's the reason I coached it 800 years ago when I played. That's why I like to play. But I think both teams will really push the ball and hopefully it'll be a fun game. It is definitely going to be a fast paced basketball game because Kansas is at their best when they run and get out in transition. We're definitely at our best when we can run and get out in transition. So it's going to be one of those games where there'll be a lot of points hopefully put up on that board and it may come down as to who can get stops at crunch time in the basketball game. Well, this is unexplored territory for this team from Lewis and Clark country. They've never been to the 
Final Four in 43 years, but they've got Luke Ridenour leading the way. Well, when you go on an expedition, you need a leader, and who better for the Oregon Ducks than Luke in the backcourt? He finds people, but he's made it contagious. It's popular to give it up. He's got great hesitation moves. He gives it to people because they get free. They know that he'll get it to them at the proper time, but more importantly, Vern, deep, he is so tough, but a little pastry at the end for Showtime Luke. And of course, a very familiar spot for the Kansas Jayhawks. They have been to the Final Four, trying to get back there for the 11th time. Drew Gooden, consensus All-American leading their way. And what he does best, I think, is run the floor and add in rebounding. On the defensive end, he's solid. Roy feels he's maybe the best offensive rebounder he has ever coached. But his ability to run the floor, he's the trailer here. And their ability to finish with the three perimeter look makes them very tough to defend. A little blow by here by Aaron Miles can put you back on your heels. So it'll be a one seed against a two seed. Kansas, Oregon coming up from the Cole Center in Madison. Let's go back to New York and Greg and Clark. Vern and Raph, thank you both. Coming up in today's second regional final, UConn meets Maryland. Last night, we spoke with Maryland Terrapins head coach Gary Williams, and I asked him if his team needed any more motivation than the memory of the crushing defeat Duke handed them in the national semifinals last year. Our thanks to Coach Gary Williams. It'll be Maryland or UConn playing the winner of Oregon and Kansas in one national semifinal. Indiana, Oklahoma are set for the other. Our coverage from Atlanta begins on Saturday at 4 Eastern with the Final Four show, followed by the national semifinals at 6 Eastern. Speaking of Indiana, the one damper on the Hoosiers' victory over Kent State yesterday was Tom Coverdale's second-half ankle injury. The point guard, who was named the most outstanding player of the South region, went crashing to the floor with 9.35 left in the game. X-rays were negative. The injury has been diagnosed as a significant left ankle sprain. He'll be reevaluated later today, and his status for Saturday will be announced tomorrow. Here are the five finalists for this year's USBWA Men's Player of the Year Award. Dan Dickow of Gonzaga, Maryland's Juan Dixon, Drew Gooden of Kansas, Steve Logan of Cincinnati, and Duke's Jason Williams. The winner will be announced here on CBS next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern during the United States Basketball Writers Association Player of the Year show presented by Kinko's. Coming up, the story of Kansas guard Kirk Heinrich is told by those who know him best, his parents, next on the road to the Final Four. We'll send you out to Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftree courtside in Madison in just a moment. We'll see you at the half. Enjoy the game, everyone, here on CBS.